of the House Intelligence Committee. Thanks very much, Congressman. Thanks for being with us. Uh, you saw the report yesterday. We've been reporting on this, and my uh, sources have been telling me that this, these allegations are correct, that China, and in particular this one building or area in Shanghai, which does house this unit of the, uh, of the Chinese army, is responsible for a lot of this. What can you tell us about it? Well, uh, I can't uh, confirm the specifics of the report, but can tell you this is very consistent with the types of information that we've been getting on China for some time now. Uh, and as serious as this one in, uh, location is, and it is certainly that serious, uh, this is just one part of what is a very robust military and intelligence uh, Chinese government effort uh, to conduct espionage through the web, stealing intellectual property and then repurposing it to its companies in China to compete illegally against U.S. companies. And it is breathtaking, it's serious, and will cost us the next generation of prosperity if we don't do something about it. The president has complained at the highest levels to the Chinese. This is not the first time we've heard about this. And the Chinese deny it. And I'm told that, that the American diplomats get nowhere when they bring this up with Chinese leadership. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. We need to make this a bilateral uh, one, two, three, and five uh, numbered issue when any discussions with China moving forward. Uh, and we need to take other aggressive steps. We need to start identifying these individuals, looking at maybe denying visas, visas of their families, start taking it as serious as it is consequential to American businesses. And uh, I can't tell you how serious this problem is. There is two companies left in America, Andrew. One uh, is those companies that have been hacked and know it, and two, the companies who have been hacked and don't know it. Uh, and it is unfortunate at the scope of the problem here uh, that we're just not stepping up in a way to deal with it to protect American jobs. And that's really what this is about at the end of the day. Is there also a national security issue involving infrastructure? Because we're, we're hearing from the President and the State of the Union that we're talking about companies involved with nuclear power plants, with the grid, the electric grid, with financial services, with the pipelines. Yeah. Well, here's what we know. So nation states, Russia, China, others, have a part of their military planning, what's called prepping the battlefield. So they would go in in any uh, confrontation and shut down pipelines and go after uh, electric grids and all of those things. We saw the Russians do it to, uh, in South Ossetia before they invaded a few years ago. And so it's been become a part of regular military planning. But it, where that gets very serious, and that's serious enough, uh, you have countries like Iran who are not rational actors, who believe they have nothing left to lose by trying to take down our financial services sector, by trying to take down electric grids or other things that are hugely consequential here to our economy and actually the lives of U.S. citizens. We saw them probing just a few weeks ago uh, some of our American financial institutions. We saw what they did to uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, it's called Aramco, one of their major oil production companies that was a very sophisticated, very very lethal attack on their systems that caused huge problems for them. We see Iran now here probing, as I just talked about. All of these are real. It's not, this is not movie stuff. This is real. It's happening thousands of times a day. And we need to step up and uh, really meet this challenge head on. We can do it. Uh, we offered a bipartisan bill last year called cyber information sharing so we could share uh, classified information that we get about what threats are out there, have the private sector say here's the threats that we're seeing, a very robust sharing of cyber threat information. That would be a huge step in the right direction. Confronting China directly uh, with bilateral uh, talks on their, uh, the cost of cyber espionage uh, would be another way of, of dealing with this and as I said getting more aggressive about name and names and uh, starting to deny visas and other things and just say we're as serious about this uh, as you are about stealing the information of American businesses. Now two quick points just to play devil's advocate the Iranians uh, might argue that they're retaliating against Stuxnet and I know you can't confirm anything but we have reported as others that the U.S. and Israel were engaged in trying to undermine their uh, secret and uh, arguably illegal nuclear programs. So if we play this game too, aren't we then going to get retaliated against? Well, when you talk about cyber attacks, and I'd be very, very, very uh, cautious about subscribing or ascribing, excuse me, a, a, an author to, to the, uh, the, the software that you talked about. 
But any time that, that that happens, and by the way, this is happening thousands of times a day. We're catching a lot of it. Some of it we don't. Uh, you need to understand that we have to have two approaches to this. One is to build our defenses, right? You don't want to go punch your neighbor in the, in the nose without hitting that weight room first and getting yourself in shape for what comes next. We're not there yet. And so my argument is get our defenses where we need to get them uh, and then build an offensive capability only when absolutely necessary as a part of military planning like the Russians, like the Chinese, just to have it. Uh, and it would be absolutely uh, uh, you know, just unconsequential if we didn't at least prep for having that capability. Uh, and, you know, we, we have some great capabilities. Our intelligence services have great capabilities, uh, but we're so at risk because 95 percent of our networks are private sector networks here. Uh, we're not talking about government activity to government activity. That's very different. It has been happening since George Washington asked Nathan Hale to go spy on the British in New York City. Uh, that part has been going on forever. What we're talking about here is something completely different, a nation state attacking the private sector, a nation state stealing uh, information, then giving it to their businesses to compete against the United States. This is a whole new day when it comes to cyber warfare. Mike Rogers, Congressman, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Thanks for the Thanks, update. And there is a reason why so many